Okay, this is module 22, the first of the college algebra modules. So this, uh, this first topic says, finding the area of a triangle or parallelogram in the coordinate plane. What is the area of the parallelogram? So the area of a parallelogram is found by the length times the width, okay? So we basically need to find those two dimensions and then we've got our um, area. So what I like to do is I like to draw a line going straight down and then I count how many units to go from here to here. So if this y value is five, this y value is negative four, how many units would we have had to have counted down? We would have counted five and then four more six, seven, eight, nine. So nine units for the length or width, depending on whether it's shorter or fatter. We don't necessarily know. Um, and then to, ca to catch the width, you're just gonna go from one dot, one dot here to the next dot over there. And so how much has passed there? Well, this X value is negative three and this X value is six. So we would have had to have gone three units over and then six more, making the width nine units. So when we multiply these together, we get that the area of the parallelogram is 81 units squared. However, we don't know what the units are, so we don't need to use a measurement. We can just use the numerical value for the 81. Now the same thing here for the area of the triangle. So the area formula for the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So here for the base, you can use these numbers here. From here to here, how many units have passed? Well, if the X value here is negative six and the X value here is negative two, or if you count, um, it should have crossed over um, four units. So one half times four units to get from negative six to negative two. However, the height is from the peak until it hits the base. So I need to calculate from this Y value of six to this Y value of negative three. So it would have gone six units and then three more making the height nine units total. Now, if I multiply this, um, you do have to go from left to right, so one half of four is two, and then two times nine is 18. And again, it would be squared units, but because we weren't given units, you are fine to leave the units off and just give the numerical value. Here is another topic, the distance between two points in the plane, and here they want the exact hours. Well, in order for us to find the distance um, between two points, we need to know the distance formula. And that is x1 minus x2, or the other way around, plus y1 minus y2. Again, or the other way around. All you need to do is figure out the, dis the, the measurement between them, okay? So here they give us these two points. I'm gonna call this x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we're just going to fill it in um, to the formula. So x1 is 9 minus from the formula and then 2 for x2 plus y1 which is 0 minus y2 which is a negative 4 squared. And so then let's do the computation. We have to do what's inside the parentheses first. And then we can do the squaring. We get 49 plus 16. I get 65. And I don't think that 65 is going to reduce any. So this is the exact answer. Okay. Now, this is a different topic, but it's ultimately the same thing, except for now they are allowing you to have decimal answers. So instead of leaving your calculator like that, you would just hit the decimal button and then you have the decimal answer. And they want us to round it to nearest hundred. But I do have different values here. So I'm gonna call this one x1, y1, x2, y2, and then go ahead and plug everybody into my formula. 
So we have negative 8 minus negative 2 squared plus 5 minus 8 squared. So in this parentheses, this turns to plus, which gives me negative 6 squared. Here I get negative 3 squared. So we get 36 plus 9, which is 45. But they don't want the exact answer, so I can type in square root of 45 and tell it to give me the decimal. And I need to round to the nearest hundredth, tenths, hundredths. Well, the 8 is going to affect that 0. So this rounds to... 6.71 units. Now this is the midpoint of a line segment in the plane. So we need to know the formula for the midpoint. The midpoint is, notice it's a capital M, not a lowercase m like we use for um, slope. It's a point, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to find halfway between the x values and halfway between the y values. So we need to use this formula to figure out the x value. And we need to use this formula to figure out the y value. So then in this case, I'm going to call this one x1, y1, x2, y2, and plug them into the formula. So 4 plus a negative 2 over 2. Um, negative 2 plus a negative 6 over 2. So this becomes um, 2 over 2. This becomes negative 8 over 2. And so the value I get is 1 and negative 4. So if I look at this, 1 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4 would be right here, which visually does look like the middle of that line segment. Now this topic says identifying the center and radius to a graph of a circle given its equation in standard form, okay? So the equation in standard form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal to r squared. r is the radius and h comma k is the center. Okay, and so they want us to identify the radius and the center for these two equations. Okay, now notice that the formula has a minus here, but when I the center, it's eight positive. Okay, so whatever the sign is in here, when you write the coordinates down, you're going to use the opposite sign. Same for k, whatever's in here, you're going to use the opposite for your coordinates for your center. Radius, you do have to figure that out because they'll give you what radius squared is, but you actually have to take the square root of it to figure out what radius is. So for example, this one here, h is equal to a positive 3, k is equal to the opposite of that, which is a negative 4. Here, r squared equals 4, but that means r would have to equal 2. The square root of 4 is 2. It does not make sense to have a radius of negative 2 because the radius is a distance and negative distance is, does not make sense. So then my center is going to be the coordinates three comma negative four, and my radius is going to be two. Similarly over here, but notice that I don't have the parentheses. So you can write the parentheses there, and it's the same as saying x minus zero and y minus zero. So if you don't see a number inside the parentheses, that just means that your h is going to be 0 if there's no, no parentheses around the eight, x, and your k is going to be 0 if there's no parentheses around the y. Your r squared is equal to 9, which means r would have to equal 3. So your center is 0, 0, which is the origin, and your radius is equal to 3.